welcome to another vlog i posted an extra one this week i posted one on tuesday so if you haven't seen that yet that comes before this one uh we got furniture for the embroidery room and set that all up and the room is looking amazing now and super functional so yeah watch that one first if you haven't but uh, today i'm going to practice more embroidery stuff but first i'm packing some orders you're on my little mini white tripod up on my Copic case. It's perfect. Like my head's a little cut off, but you don't need to, you don't need to see that. I was so sore last night from building those tables and I don't even fully understand why. Like my inner thighs were hurting. <laughs> I was like, where, what, where did this come from? <laughs> like it was from setting up that room, but how? And oh my God, the mirrors in that room make the bin wall look so long. <laughs> looks like I have so many bins. Why are the thumbnails for these glitched out? I like to see the thumbnails for the items I'm grabbing and it's just gray. Little ducky sticker sheet, little ducky washi, and little ducky pin. Gotta grade the rest of those bins soon, although I think I want this week's live stream to be embroidery just so I can get in more practice too before our next training session. Earlier, well, I guess last week, last week I had just two orders to do on the Thursday. So I was like, hmm, is this the time when I should close down the store? But then I had five today, so I think we're still good. Because <laughs> if I consistently have like one or two packages for the mailman to pick up, I'm like, should I just close it till I launch some new products? Although I don't feel like, like usually I do that when I have new products about to drop and we're not at that point yet really like like with the embroidery I haven't bulk ordered thread and I have not bulk ordered the sweaters either I mean I don't have to order it in that of bulk but like I've just got my test sweaters and then for like the strawberry design I have one cone of each color and they're small cones but like I need to order more before I can get more stuff in the shop so I'm like should I just close the store for a little bit i don't know hello ship station are you awake but yeah i want to go to dollarama for safety glasses hopefully i can find them there because it's just a nice close place to check <laughs> and i wouldn't mind also checking there for hair rollers like i just need like two really <laughs> for my bangs because i want to give that a try okay is this hello Where's the label? <sighs> I have some emails to get to as well. <laughs> like not store emails. Store emails I get to right away. Any other kind of email? No. <laughs> okay, I finally got it to work. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katerina, for your order. These next ones are going to be for Maddie, Morgan, Rhonda, and Jimena. So I couldn't get the labels to print. So I just packaged the orders without creating the labels. I just labeled them with a pen. And then I tried to purchase the labels after and I've been fighting with it for like half an hour. And so I'm, what is happening is it is purchasing the labels. It's just taking forever. So it shows up in my order list as being an unshipped order. But then like 15 minutes later, it'll show up as a shipped package. And some of these have gone through multiple times. And so I've purchased labels, like multiple labels per order. So I'm voiding them, like certain ones to get a refund. I have to look at the label. I did get a printout of, see what the tracking number is and cross-reference that and delete the ones that are not that one because I've got multiples now. So if you are Jimena, Maddie, Morgan, Katerina, or Rona, it's possible your shipping confirmation email has the wrong tracking number. So if you can't track your package, email me and I 
<laughs> go find your actual one because this is a mess. I'm also getting all kinds of error pop-ups like could not load orders. Like ShipStation is glitching out hard today. So right now I'm just waiting for Morgan's to go through. I think I bought a label for it. Oh my God, see, I don't even know. I'm gonna have to wait and see so I don't end up purchasing it twice. What the heck, ShipStation? Okay, I got the last one to work. We got them all. Yay. Oh no, oh no, I finally did it. I finally did it. I finally did it! <laughs> I had my phone on here and it slipped off when I picked up the packages and it landed perfectly face down. I just had a feeling with how perfectly face down it landed, I knew I busted it. See, it's not even in the case right now because I took the case off so it would fit in my stupid shower holder so I can watch videos in the shower. And I've dropped it a lot and it's been okay, but you, you. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I had a feeling I was gonna do this too. I keep all my old phones. None are broken, although there's like a little crack in the corner of my iPhone 4 screen. It should still be usable. Oh God! Mm. I can't believe I've done this to myself. Oh yeah, this part's kind of sharp too. There's like an entire shard missing from a section. I mean, I have been looking at new phones and I've been wanting to upgrade especially for filming purposes. But I was gonna hold out. It's gonna hold out till like October. Well, I'll just use it and see how things go. My beautiful purple S9, no! Keep your cases on, people. Filling on my cracked phone screen. I just had some toast for breakfast and I was scrolling TikTok and when you open the comments, the first comment is exactly where the crack spider's from. And I'm like, no. And then I was responding to friend messages and messenger. Again, it's right on their messages because it's on the left side of the screen. Why couldn't the crack be spidering from the right hand side? Where am I looking at the camera? Why couldn't it spider from the right hand side? Mm. Uh, whatever. I mean, I was planning on upgrading my phone this year anyway. So maybe it'll just happen a little earlier than I originally planned. <laughs> Okay, I've already grabbed candles and some lint rollers because some of them I got recently from Walmart. It falls off all the time and drives me nuts. Oh, I should get knee pads for when I'm outside. Yeah, I'm getting that. I've been thinking about that for a while. Now, we have full coverage with the strap. I feel like the overhead strap I would never use though. Like, is this sufficient? I want ones I can easily get on and off. Shooting glasses. Haunting accessory. Um, I just found different ones in the gardening section. <laughs> oh my god. I'm grabbing a couple tablecloths because when I want to cover my art desk, the cloth ones are always nasty and covered in fur. Yeah, pink and green. This one's tempting too. They're also all patterned and I always want solid, I feel like, when I'm setting up the table. Uh, I'll stick with these two. I also would like some compressed air, which I know they sell here. Okay, I'm back. I grabbed two of these. They took me forever to find. It was on my third pass through the aisle that I saw them and I was like, oh, finally. <laughs> I have one of these on my warehouse packing station already, but I'm gonna get another one for the embroidery room. And I got two more pairs of scissors because just for regular scissors, I don't want to take the ones from my art room to put in there. So grab a couple. Uh, I think that was the one thing I didn't show. I put this in my card too, because uh, I'm going to paint it to look like Sadie. So that's why I grabbed that. <laughs> oh, and I could not find the little hair rollers. I thought for sure they'd have a small pack of them. Couldn't find anything. And now I'm going to edit that Tuesday vlog I spoke of. <laughs> It's now six o'clock and I just got the vlog uploaded. It was a long edit. I had a lot of footage and like a lot of useless footage because I filmed so much of us setting things up and I never intended to include every bit of it, but I still had to go through and like cut out all the 
parts. I don't know. It was a lot. I did also break for supper and then I did dishes and came to finish up. So I don't know if I'm going to embroider tonight, but I do still have all of tomorrow and I think I'm going to do embroidery on stream on Wednesday. So there's time and I've officially booked the second training session for Friday. So that gives me plenty of time to practice the more, but look what came in. So this is the rack that holds the thread. And at first I thought it looked kind of small cause I, there is a smaller version that they sell. And at first I thought maybe they sent me that by mistake, but no, they fit. Now these guys, <laughs> I think I'd have to go every second uh, post here cause that's a little thicker but it holds 66 cones of thread and I don't, mean, I don't really know what else to say about it. It's smaller than I thought, which is actually kind of nice because it's not going to take up a huge amount of space. It's going to be a touch dark so I can't be bothered to turn on all the lights. I figure I might as well leave these in the plastic till I go to use them so they don't get all dusty. So this thing could either go in the corner where the hooping station is currently sitting, or if I just like... I mean, it probably will go in the corner because the hooping station would really only come out if that's the station we're using. Like, otherwise it can just be put underneath, so... actually kind of nice because tucked into the corner it's still kind of forward forward enough to reach stuff well maybe i'll struggle on the the highest ones oh and there's the hooping station i just tucked it under that way fits nicely yay what i'm gonna do is sort of set up for the live stream now at least figure out how i'm doing it in case I need to get any cables for it, I can order them and hopefully get them in time. Or like maybe I can go physically somewhere to get one, I don't know. Cause for example, I don't know if I have HDMI extension cords and if I do, do I have enough? Cause if I'm streaming way in that back room and I'm streaming to this computer, which is way at the front of this room, then <laughs> that's a lot of cables. Microphone I'm fine because I have my wireless clip-on microphone. Okay, it took a lot of rearranging. I tried two different cameras and I tried various USB extension cord combos. Although I have to absolutely use the longest one. So I was like, please don't let that be the one that's making this not work. But it finally worked. So I could tweak it when I have it actually set up facing the machine because right now I don't. The webcams are just sitting right here. So they're facing this way and that's what we're seeing right now. But that could be like the machine cam and I can adjust this crop and sizing depending on how it looks when it's all set up, but I at least got both cameras set up. This is as far as I could take it with the HDMI cameras. Well, camera singular. I've got this taped here and <laughs> here so it doesn't pull down on here, but this is pretty much as far in as I can get. Now, depending what we end up doing for a computer in that room, I could just stream off of that computer in the future. Right now, I'm just using my gaming laptop as the embroidery laptop, and so that's just a temporary solution, but maybe in the future, I could set something up that's just streaming from that room. Okay, tis the next day. I've been doing some stuff around the house and prepping a file, going through all the available images for the default images for the software and this is what I've done. So I've been playing around with the text settings. I had a thicker font initially, but the way it did the serifs, especially on the S's was so bad. Like the little serif bits were behind the rest of the S and I was like, oh, it's weird. So I switched up the font and my colors won't look exactly like this. Um, instead of assigning the exact colors I have, I'm just like, okay, this red will be number 15. So it'll look brighter like this. But um, that's the design, <laughs> Apple Blossom. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it on this sweater. I just wanted something for a chest piece where I get to use my 10 by 10 hoop because I haven't done that yet. So that's what I've come up with to go on that hoop. Also, we got this detached from the, it was on one of these Ikea desks 
and it was kind of glued on in addition to the screws and I've tried to get it off before and kind of gave up so I had Christian use his man muscles to rip that off because we're probably going to put this keyboard tray in the other room because the cameras in here are counter height and so if you're sitting in the chair kind of on the keyboard maybe a little lower if Christian's in here running the machine it'd be nice if he could also game on the computer between like whenever he has downtime to sit down and so we want something that can run all of that. So we were, well, Christian built a computer online and we looked at like monitors and cables, mouse, keyboard. And so we've got everything ordered now. So we'll hopefully soon have a different computer down here. <laughs> so, and I do have that higher stool, but it's not comfy to sit in all day. Okay. I think I did calibrate this for my 10 inch hoop. Oh my God, I'm cold. I kind of want to put on a sweater, but I just made Christian like, tone down the AC a little bit because like we don't need it that cold. If you're wearing a sweater in summertime, then your AC is too hot and you're just paying extra money to wear a sweater. Now I do want to add more to this, but I was kind of thinking of making it sleeve only. So add a whole bunch more small stuff to the sleeves, like there's a spider web design. I could do it in different colors and yeah. So that's probably all I'll do on this one is just pure decked out sleeves. Cause we've already got, you know, some design crowding here. So might as well just continue with that theme. <laughs> now the audio in here is really bad. I probably should be wearing the mic at all times when filming in this room, but then it's like, I have to go into this camera and change the audio settings every time. And so I'm like, you know what? Maybe we'll just deal with the echo until we get more soundproofing in this room. I'm trying to use up this weird piece before I use other stuff. I have not pre-cut any pieces yet, so we're still doing this. Let's actually flip this. Cause the tongue is in my way. These scissors are so tall. I'm struggling to cut a straight line so close to the blue. <laughs> My crooked lines, don't judge me. You can also buy pre-cut sheets if you have a size that works for you. Bottom piece in. See these little flaps I feel like should be, well I guess they can't come up too high, but <laughs> they're not even gonna reach the stabilizer. There's lines on here where I can line up the neckline. I don't know where I'm gonna want it for this sweater size. I have no clue. We're just gonna yellow this a bit. I've seen people uh, fold their sweaters in half and press them quickly to get a nice center line. I'm not doing that with this one, but I'm realizing how handy that would be. <laughs> Cause I'm just trying to eyeball this center here. I'm like, are both halves draping the same amount? Cause the seam is falling to the back. Unless I pull it forward enough that the seam is here. And the neckline's so low. Bro, I don't know. Like maybe this is one of the ones where it's just easier to do it flat on a table. Instead of the hooping station. Because I feel like people mostly, at least from what I've seen, people mostly use this for chest stuff. And I'm going to hope that's centered. I mean, if hoops here, it's going to start the, you know, it goes. I feel like I don't like the designs to start too low because I feel like a lot of stuff it's low and it's like for men okay like us ladies we got boobies we got dimension okay like I don't want the design to just be right here I'd like it better if the design was up here although this one's pretty big so it's gonna it's still gonna go down but I don't want the design just eaten by the boobs so the hoops like right under there and the design will be pretty high okay It feels tricky with sweaters too, because it's like, I want it tight, but I don't want to stretch out the sweater. I have no idea if this is actually centered. Because <laughs> like so much of this drapes that I'm like, it kind of looks centered to me, but. Okay. 
This is my embroidery scrunchie. It matches the room. That is my eyelashes. I have protruding eyes. I need goggles that sit away from my face. I hope the colors are set up correctly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to mess this design up. It's kind of cute. <laughs> I'm supposed to be making ugly test sweaters and here I am like, let's make it the most beautiful sweater that I'm gonna wear all the time. <laughs> I think we're ready to hit go. This thing scares me so much. I'm like, ah. Are you turned on right now? Always. <laughs> I'm leaving that in the vlog. <laughs> I'm just like posing with my glasses. Okay. Bobbin. Bobbin, Bobbin. I think you also got a thread break there. It was doing that a lot to me the other day where like it would start a design and they would just come unthreaded right away. Looks like it's going. I hate how much the camera hates the light on the Melco. <laughs> like, looking at it in real life, the sweater looks bright, the light looks a little brighter, but when I try to film it, if the sweater looks normal, the light looks so blown out that you can't really see what's being stitched. So I have to turn down the exposure on the camera so that the area that's lit up looks normal, but then everything around it looks so dark and I'm just like, mm. it's like such a pain in the butt to film it. <laughs> I thought for sure the bobbin was going to run out mid-design, but it did not. Apple blossom jeans. Doo -doo. Now isn't that cute? Adorbs. Let's put it on. Okay, well before I put it on, I gotta cut the stabilizer stiff. So... Flip of this. So yeah, with tear away stabilizer, this would be the part where you tear it away. These feel so small. Like I almost feel like I'd be better off using these as long as I'm careful, because <laughs> they're not curved. But like you can cut much more at once. Kind of glides. And I don't think I'd want the wash away stuff because I feel like if you're if we're ironing on the soft touch backing, would the stabilizer disintegrating interfere with that? Would like clumps of stabilizer be stuck in there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm making sure I'm not cutting like this because then I might accidentally cut the sweater. I'm flipping it over so I can see. 
sweater. I'm trying to do shortcuts so I'm not just chomping everywhere. Like I probably could cut closer here, but I don't think you have to. Like, I think it's fine like this. So that's what the back looks like. Apple blossom. Let's try it on. This rack here interferes with my ability to film myself in the mirror. Apple blossom. It looks even. It's close to nip, close to nip. Looks centered. Height's pretty good. <laughs> the green's a bit neon, but I'm just, you know, working with what we got. Unless I wanted to snatch these because these probably would have been the perfect colors for this design, but we're not touching those yet. Ask us, me, Kiki. What do you think you're doing? I would like to do more on this and just really deck out the sleeves, I think. Like, fill here and possibly even the other side of the other sleeve. I don't know if I'm gonna do that much embroidery today because doing that on both sleeves would take a while. But I don't know. I mean, maybe I can hoop, just hoop this whole section and then have like a design here that kind of stagger them a little bit. Just do maybe three things, then hoop the other side. So I'll have to create something in the software where I combine multiples. Cause again, I'm just using existing designs. Oh, also about the AC. When I asked Christian to change the temperature, he said it was already too cold for the AC to kick on. So it hasn't even been running down here technically. And yet I'm cold and I was like, how is that possible? Cause it's warm outside. Cause there's a separate system for basement and main floor. And then the second floor is its own separate system. I think it's cause when the AC runs, the furnace room gets really cold. So even if it's just piping it up to the second floor, it's still generating cold air down here. So we really need to get one of those little, like make the little cutout in the door for the kitties to get in and out to use a litter box and then just keep it closed. It's like, unnecessarily cold in here right now. <laughs> okay, after some messing around, this is what I've come up with. I've changed some of the colors, like the web is black by default, but I thought it would look good white because it's gonna be close to the black kitty. And because spider webs are white. Oh, you know, you're not allowed in here while this is stitching. Mm -mm. It's okay, I'm not stitching yet. But yeah, we got skeleton, haunted house, and web. And I've been playing around with the positioning because like, I don't know, I want it to fit well on here. And so if I hold down hoop and trace, that little laser, as you can't really see, there we go, that laser traces out where it'll go. And so I felt like it was kind of far from the cat at first. So I brought the design down a bit so that it's gonna be closer. Color sequence is assigned. So let's go. Okay, so haunted house is looking a little hairy. I've got a lot of stuff to trim, <laughs> but it had so many pieces to it. It has so many little sections to do and stop and go back over. Uh, the eyebrows on here look like little cat ears. <laughs> I don't know how often I would do stuff with a bunch of tiny detail and outlines like that. Um, I mean, for example, my strawberries may have little strawberry seeds on them, but stuff like that. This is probably not the type of thing I would do, but you never know what I'm gonna get into in the future. But what is amazing about this is this is the first time the machine has run an entire design without stopping for a thread break or bobbin break. So that's very exciting. What do you think, Kinky? 
Now I also want to run some designs down this side, but since I have this file open, I might as well do that on this side. This cat is lower on the sleeve, so I've tweaked the positioning of the items a little bit. Also, I hoop this one without using the hooping station. I think it is easier with the station. I just wanted to try, because this thing goes around the hoop to hold the stabilizer on while you put it through the sleeve, but it doesn't actually hold it that tight because this is such a long edge that it's a little flimsy. So it's just, there's not really much tension along here. So it snaps these sides real well, but here it's not tight at all. Cause that was kind of my one gripe about this thing is I felt like the stabilizer wasn't taut enough, but I kind of get the same issue with this. So I think that's just going to be the reality of using a long skinny hoop. But anyway, once again, it stitched the entire thing without stopping. <gasps> it's a Christmas miracle. A Christmas miracle in June with the spooky season sweater. <laughs> the house is less stringy too. We've got a couple here where the windows are, but that's it. Oh, I had them aligned on the wrong side. I forgot to move them over to this side of the hoop. So like the skeleton, <laughs> that's a big gap. I mean, it still looks okay. And here's sleeve number two. I'm doing another pumpkin because I feel like it just needs a pumpkin. Because the other pumpkin's so far away. It's on the very inner sleeve. So this will be up here. And then back, ghosts, candy, eyes. And I just changed all the colors to match colors I have to see better how it would look, I guess. And it'll make it easier when I bring it into the other software. Because they're using like multiple oranges and multiple yellows. I'm not sure I would do this every time, but I cut a little notch out here to go around the blue part so it lays flatter. Beep. Oh my God, you guys. I just realized I never properly assigned the colors. Like I did it in the first program, but I didn't assign it in the second program. I didn't even realize cause like the ghosts were coming out white and I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I just looked over and I'm like, Bro. Why are their trick-or-treat bags green? <laughs> okay, I just reset the color sequence, but I don't know if that's gonna apply to the current job or not. So, moment of truth, I only caught that because there was a thread break, which was the first for these sleeves today. There was the bobbin that ran out on this one when I was doing the bag, but that's just because it ran out of thread. It wasn't a bobbin break. Resume, Let's see if it does the right colors. <laughs> Other than that one thread break, there were no other mishaps. And you know, the color sequence being wrong, I guess, also counts. But I mean, like the machine wasn't acting up except that one instance. So the ghosts look a little, a little silly, but you know, it still works out. <laughs> it is kind of weird that the only thing without an outline, because I could like delete all the other parts of this except the outline and try to run it again. But what are the odds it would be perfectly aligned? So we're just gonna leave it. Uh, but yeah, just a few threads to trim. Pumpkin did the exact same thing it's been doing every time with this extra orange. But look at that. Yoo-hoo, kiki, baby. Okay, you can come in for a little bit while I set up the next sleeve, but once it's embroidered, you're out of here. Yeah. It's for your protection. Especially since you like watching machines like printers. And this is just a big, thread printer and there's sleeve number two pre-trim while that was running i was creating a whole bunch of files with letters because i think during tomorrow's stream i'm going to do a letter sweater so the idea is to use a 10 inch hoop four times on the front so one in each corner and then i'll do the sleeve twice and on the back i'll just repeat what i did on the front but then for the sleeves, I didn't just repeat it because I wanted to 
I don't want to use the same letters for both sleeves. So the sleeves are technically different. And yeah, the back will just be the same as the front. So we have all the makings of a letter sweater, Kiki. It's getting kind of late, but like, I'm just having fun with this, you know? <laughs> it's past nine already. Kiki, thank you for that. Also, after the sleeve finish, my machine prompted me for some maintenance. I had to oil one part of the machine. So what's really cool is that it just automatically tells you when it's due for maintenance. It's keeping track of the stitches and it'll tell you. This stuff is really good for scissor gliding. Now I doubt I would ever cover a sleeve this much to sell because it would just take way too long. I mean, I could do some kind of limited run where there's a limited amount of sweaters done like this and they'd obviously be more expensive due to the labor. But it's fun to do for myself. Here are how the ghosties are supposed to look. <laughs> oh, versus the other sleeve. I mean, it's softer around the wrist without something right on the end. Do 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 do. So spooky. <laughs> the fact that the text is higher than the skeleton works out because this droops down. And then this side. <laughs> spooky sweater, spooky sweater. Cool. Okay, I'm out of here for tonight. <laughs> so it's now Wednesday, pretty much the evening. It's like quarter to six. Yes, I just ended my live stream for Wednesday. So if you wanna see letter sweater stuff, <laughs> well, I mean, you'll see more actually in the vlog too. I haven't finished it. But yeah, last night I prepped all the files for it, although I realized I forgot to rotate the letters. So I was doing that on stream. And I basically stitched out everything I had prepped, but I feel like there are some gaps that need to be filled. So uh, this one has a gap in the front because I thought I was hooping the front of the sweater, but I was actually hooping the back. And so I was trying to favor the front and it ended up favoring the back, but that actually looks perfect for the back. So I'm just gonna add another column of letters. And so this one, I did favor the front, but I feel like the back needs an additional column. So we'll do the same thing on both sleeves. I feel like, I could get to the edges more, like maybe a single letter up here on both sides and then add a bit more to the top. There are also a couple spots where we had a sewing mishap where a little bit of fabric folded under and it stitched through two layers of sweater. And so there are three letters that I had to seam rip and I'm not done seam ripping, but I basically have to rip them out and I'm gonna have to redo those letters. So that's on the back of the sweater. So, my plan for tonight is to seam rip more of those. Well, I think I might go cook stuff right now. But yeah, just while sitting on the couch, I can finish seam ripping those and also maybe cut some of the stabilizer closer because I was just doing quick cutting jobs. So it's like chunky, but I'm gonna try to cut a little closer to the letters. And I just made the letter sweater for fun because I wanted to do more embroidery practice and just have something embroidery related to do on stream today. So that's what I did, but it's not done. I want to perfect it. <laughs> so it's almost like a redo of my old letter sweater. I had one that was black and it had these gold metal letters on it. And I think I got rid of it when we moved because it just sat in a bin forever because the letters were peeling off and I thought I would fix it, but they were literally glued on and it was, it seems like it was just not fixable. So I'm making a new letter sweater for my shelf. <laughs> and this is not something I would ever sell because it's way too labor intensive. Like the front is hooped four times. The back is hooped four times. Each sleeve has been hooped twice and I'm gonna be doing even more. So it's one of those things where it's just a personal project for myself. Let me do some close-ups of the ones I'm seam ripping. So there's a cue here. And there's more to take out all these little stitches because it's really easy to rip the main stitches because 
they're so long, so it's just, you know, kind of rip them front and back. But there are these extra lines to do. And same with this B. And then there's a B on the back. There's a Kiki on the back. Uh, wait, not that one. That's the front. This is the back. Oh, this B. <laughs> this one here, I still have to go at it. And so, y'all. But, like, look at these. Look at the letters. It's so exciting. All right, time to finish off the letter sweater. I'm going to do individual letters in my BB hoop. Look how small. So I'm not going to use a hooping station. I'm just going to use this thing. Stick it where I want it in the sweater. Bada bing, bada boom. So here you can see the ghost of a bee. And so I'm going to try to line it up with that spot as best as I can. I was struggling to hoop the bee in the center. And so I just moved it over in the software. And I just did a trace and it's like perfect. Oh, probably already see on camera. It's going to struggle to focus on non-existent stitches, but the laser looks great. I realize I have not mentioned this yet. I talked about it in the stream, but this is a heat press and it's a huge heavy duty one. And the reason I have it is because the place I got the Melco from, Embroidery Systems Canada, they saw my video about me getting the machine and everything and they offered to give me this. This is a $1,500 heat press. Cause I was talking about how I still need to get a heat press and they just gave me one. So, oh my God, if you're watching, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I've already said thank you in person, but ah, uh, ah, look, it's even on its own stand. Although this is where we want to put a second Melco eventually. So I don't, I don't know where it's going to go. Like it could maybe just barely fit on the counter. Cause that's where I thought I would put a heat press is over here. We'll have to figure that out. But for now it's here and go. perfect positioning. I feel like that was a fluke and the other ones aren't going to be as good. <laughs> but yeah, I got a lot more to add on here. So I'll check in with you when it's done. I have these pieces of stabilizer that don't go all the way to the edge, but I can still use them. But it's actually nice how flat it lays if you don't go over these little tongues. Okay, I'm pretty much done, but I have to fix one thing. So what I've added, a Y up here. I added this D because it was in line with this diagonal, but it felt like there was still a lot of space here. So I added this L, which maybe is a little too tilted, but it was hard to figure out the angles because I was feeding the hoop through the neck. And so the hoops are at weird angles and I was trying to like mentally calculate which way to rotate it in the software so that it would show up the right way. Um, I added the row back here, this Q E X. And I was hooping these individually just so I could have better control over the placement instead of one long hoop. So I did that. And then this one got the front letters. There's S-A-E. And this is where it kind of messed up because, well, one, the S is a little far away. But the bobbin ran out. And then when I resumed stitching, I didn't go back far enough because you can rewind stitches so that it goes back to where it messed up, but I didn't go far back enough. So when it resumed stitching, it started over there. So we're missing the entire end of the S. So I'm gonna seam rip that one and redo it just like I did with the others. And I added some on the back as well, closer to the neckline. I added the S and the E and I was like, oh, this is getting funky. Don't put an X here. But then I did a G and then I was like, wait a minute. Seg is just another word for sex. <laughs> Seg. And under the armpit, I added two letters on each side. But what's tricky about these is that the letters I had on the front and back were tileable in terms of position and color. And so by trying to add some in between the tiles, it messes with the placement and with the colors. So you kind of end up with two of the same color next to each other. Like here on this side, the Z and the N are kind of in line diagonally. It's also a little close to the F, but Whatever, it just helped fill that space. And there's no seam here, it's just a fold. Thought it was a seam at first, but it's just where the shirt was folded. So it was perfectly fine to stitch that there. So we'll do one final try on. I will be fixing the S, but I'm just gonna leave it as is for the try on. So here we go. So here we go. Final 
reveal. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Shoulder. It wraps around. Look at that. Wow. So profesh. Now, there could be some added around the wrists, but the fabric does bunch at my wrists because it's a long sleeve on me. So I figured it's better to just leave it because we've got like the letters, then the bunching, then the cuff. So it kind of actually works out to leave that exactly as is. But there you have it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.